magical treats taste great, but justice and equality taste better. To combat hate, all ad revenue from My HP Kitchen will be donated to trans and LGBTQ charities. Thank you for supporting the kitchen and helping make the world a better place. Mischief managed. Hello witches, wizards and those who have just escaped from Azkaban, welcome back to my Harry Potter kitchen, the YouTube series where we're baking our way through the Harry Potter books, creating recipes for all the food and drink that we find inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we served up Aunt Petunia's fruitcake infused with Earl Grey tea, then check out the link down below in the description. And if you're new to the kitchen and you want to see some more Harry Potter recipes, then hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell, then you'll get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. Speaking of which, we've got some more coming in. The recipes from chapter two of The Prison of Azkaban aren't Marge's big mistake, just keep on coming. This time the family are at dinner and things are getting a little bit boozy as we see Aunt Marge reached for her glass of wine. Drink responsibly Marge, otherwise things might get a little out of control. Now I'll let you into a little secret. I do film these recipes a little bit in advance, but unfortunately not far enough in advance to make an actual bottle of wine for this recipe. So instead, I thought we'd try another treat which has wine in the name. You can tell from the title, it is the British classic sweet wine gums. There's not actually any alcohol inside. They are a lovely chewy jelly sweet, but we're gonna serve it up with a little Hogwarts house magical twist. This is what you need to do first. To begin, we're going to make our sugar syrup base for our homemade wine gum recipe. I'm gonna start off by soaking my gelatin leaves in a bowl of cold water until they're nice and soft. If you can't find any gelatin leaves, then you can convert this into gelatin powder. I'll put some tips up on my blog. While your gelatin is softening, you can prepare your sugar syrup by pouring your sugar, water and liquid glucose into a pan. Again, if you don't have any liquid glucose, you can replace this with corn syrup, but it is an important ingredient to make sure our sugar syrup doesn't crystallise. Bring your sugar syrup up to the boil until it reaches the hard ball stage, which is at 130 degrees Celsius or 266 Fahrenheit. This will take around 10 minutes. As soon as it reaches temperature, you can turn off the heat and then squeeze off the excess water from your gelatin leaves. Pop these into the sugar syrup and then stir through until dissolved. I've also added in some citric acid to cut through the sweetness. This is the part where you can go wild with the recipe and throw in any colours or flavourings you like. Of course, it's my Harry Potter kitchen and we love a little house pride. So I'm going to dye mine into the Hogwarts house colours and then use a wide range of flavourings to kind of match the sentiment of wine gums. Just remember that if you are using flavouring extracts, sometimes they come coloured. So if you're dyeing them as well, bear that in mind because it might affect the colour of your final product. Working as quickly as possible, you want to separate your candy mixture into four bowls. Add in your food colourings and your flavourings and then stir through until evenly combined. I'm creating some red wine gums with strawberry flavouring for Gryffindor, yellow wine gums with orange extract for Hufflepuff, some green with lemon extract for Slytherin, and to really put the wine in our wine gums, Prosecco extract and blue food colouring for Ravenclaw. It's best to do these one at a time and then pour them straight into the mould once you're finished. If the mixture begins to get too thick, then you can quickly pop them into the microwave until it becomes runny again. Once all of the moulds are full, you can then put them into the fridge to set for about one to two hours until firm. 
Now the traditional wine gum is a lot firmer than your typical jelly sweet and there are two ways that you can achieve this. You could add in extra gelatin but that's going to make the whole sweet a lot firmer and quite chewy which can be a little annoying on your teeth. But a real wine gum is firm on the outside but still nice and chewy on the inside. So to do this all I'm going to do is leave it out at room temperature uncovered and that is the best kind of magic. You can sit back, relax and just let the oxygen do its thing. The wine gums should be super easy to remove from your silicone mold, but if any of them are really stuck, you can also dip them quickly into some hot water. Now these wine gums can be enjoyed straight away, but if you prefer a firmer wine gum, then you can place them onto a wire rack and leave them out overnight or up to 24 hours. This will help them form a firmer exterior. And with that, our homemade wine gum jelly sweets are complete. Finally, a treat we can binge on without the hangover. This homemade wine gum recipe is so, so easy to make and it's extra fun because you get to personalize it with any flavor or color you like. Let me know down below in the comments, which wine gum would you make? That's all for this week's recipe, but if you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert next Monday when there's a brand new recipe. I'm off to enjoy my sweets, so I'll see you then.